Welcome again, Fuzzbutts. Today we're going to learn how to pattern and make your own custom tail. Let's get into this. So, step one is you want to get some paper of some sort. I like to use baking paper just because it comes in big, long, big, long bits like that. I also like this paper just because it's a bit see through. You can sort of put it on top of things and see through it. Like so. You can still see writing, whatever. Sometimes that comes in handy. So today I'm going to be making a... I don't know how to describe this tail. It's a tail for a... Ardwolf Gecko... Lima hybrid. So it's going to be a bit unique. I like that. So... Because this person wants the tail to be a slight floor dragger, we want the measurement from... So let me draw you a little stick figure person here. We want the measurement from tailbone right down to the back of the ankle. So for them, it's 91.4 centimeters. What they want is a floor dragger that's sort of does this sort of shape so that would be their tail we need to make that 91.4 centimeters plus whatever distance here and here I'm just gonna say add 15 centimeters maybe so that's 60 Plus another 60 centimeters is 120 centimeters. Cool. Uh, I want it to sit on the butt at about that angle so that it comes out a little bit. It needs quite a small base, so if it's got a small base, it needs to come in like that. Then I want the to go like this, and it will slowly taper out as I go. Slowly taper out. And then once it's reached its critical width. I want to taper it back in at the base. And the end of the tail is quite rounded. So give it about that shape. I'm so fresh, you can suck my nuts. I'm so fresh, you can suck my nuts. Swag. I'm so fresh, you can suck my nuts. 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 Swag. I'm so fresh, you can suck my nuts. 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 Swag. I'm so fresh, you can suck my nuts. 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 Swag. I'm so fresh, you can suck my nuts. I'm so fresh, you can suck my nuts. I'm so fresh, you can suck my nuts. I'm so fresh. Okay, so now we've got the green pattern pieces and a little charcoal pencil. Usually I use charcoal pencils for lighter fabrics. This one's somewhere in between light and dark so you could use either charcoal or white chalk. Today I'm just going to use charcoal. So what we want to do with these is first of all check the direction of your fur. This fur is going down that way as you can see in that that direction so that means that it's going that way. So make sure that all of your arrows are following that direction. Half a centimetre of leeway around the edge. Good thing with fur is it doesn't have to be super neat. 
at all. All right, so now that I've got that for one side, we flip it over, do the reverse side. This will be the opposite side of the tail. So you need to cut two of each piece, one normal ways, the other flipped. Trace around that. If you find your pattern is slipping all over the place, what you can do is pin it down, but I hardly ever pin down my patterns just because I can hold it with one hand. You can also use like heavy things, so if it's a really big piece, I sometimes get like forks or knives and just put a whole load of them onto the pattern to hold it down. So now what we do is grab the number, put number two, number two, and now this one was that way. I'm going to call this side with the arrow uh, and the writing on the top side. I'm going to call this the right side. So we'll put right and left. So whenever we're writing or drawing the next piece, whichever side was right way up, you put right. Whichever side was right way down, put left. Okay, so all of the pattern pieces have been traced. Now I just have to cut them out. So when you're cutting out fur, what you want to do is get a pair of scissors that are nice and sharp tipped. So they've got points on the tips. I like these ones. I'm pretty sure they're called quilting snips. They're just really good. I can't recommend these enough, like seriously. <laughs> so what you want to do is you want to go into the fur pile with the tip right up against the backing. You don't want to cut any of the fur fibers. So what I usually do is scrape the scissors up into there and start cutting. You want to do really small little cuts just so you don't end up cutting, cutting the fur. So in between it's now not cut. If you end up cutting these fur fibers like that, you're going to end up with a tail that's got bits cut off. You don't want you don't want fur that's got bits cut off unless you're going to be shaving it. So, like I said, a bit of chalk for marking the darker furs. You can use colored chalk if you want to. I just use white because that's what I've got. <laughs> And then we mark it with fur direction. This time it's going down. Okay, so we've cut all the pattern pieces. Now what do we do? Got all this baking paper left over. I'll give you a tip. You make a little pattern pouch thing. So you get an A4 piece of paper, fold it in half. Bit of masking tape here. Put that right along the edge and fold it over. And then do that to the other side. You can just cut that off. And the same with the bit on the bottom. Just uh, cut that off. There we go. Floor, drag, tail, zigzag. And I'll put a little smiley face on this one. See? <laughs> There we go. Perfect. 
So now you grab all of these bits. If you don't think they're going to fit into it, you can just fold them in half. It doesn't matter. And then you just put them. Grab a container. I got this one right here for all of my patterns. And you slide it in. All right, next step is to sort of make sure that you've got all the pieces that you need. So I know this curvy one is the end. What I usually do is I put fur on the inside and then fur on the inside with the piece that matches. I'll find the next piece, number two, and that's four, that's two, okay. So right two goes on the bottom, left two goes on the top. There we go. So now we know that we've got every single piece we need to have. So you can either pin it all together in one go, but I like to do it one section at a time. So as I'm doing this, I'll clip these together. I like to use these little clips. When you're pinning or clipping, in this case, you want to make sure that all of your furs, directions, things are going that way. You don't want any bits coming out. If you know what I mean. Clip it all together. Sweet. Now you want to do, then you want to sew it along here. And clip the next one on, sew it, clip the next one, sew it, etc. So I'm just going to do that. You guys can watch. Um, I'm going to be using upholstery thread and black. So this stuff is heavy duty thread. Just want to make sure that you can't break it by hand. That's when you know you've got a good thread. off. Sure, turning the air conditioner off. <laughs> I love that. So what I've done so far is broken this into four pieces. We've got the lower halves of the tail and the upper halves of the tail. I just did this because I didn't want to have to deal with super heavy weight fur while I'm doing the final few pieces. So now all I have to do is just sew the left to the left and the right bottom once I grab it, here we go, to the bottom of the right tail. We now have two entire tail sections. That one and this one before you say, okay, go ahead and sew them together. Oh, ha, ha, no, no, no. No, no, no. We've got to add a zipper first. A 15 centimeter black zip. Just a basic dress zip. Doesn't have to be anything special. If you want to put the zip somewhere further down in the tail, maybe go for an invisible zip of the same color. But for this, we're going to be putting it in a super simple, and invisible spot. What we do is right here at the top of the tail where it's going to be attaching to your butt. What we want to do is have your tail inside facing up. You get the zipper and we face that down. 
So that's going on the outside. Then we line it up. Yep. Grab some clips. Or pins, whatever you prefer to use. And we're going to pin it like that. So now the zipper foot is attached. What we want to do is place this in under here. Take away the first clip because it's in the way. And then we can just sew on. Other tail piece in the right orientation, like so. Yes, we need to pin this down or clip it, whichever one you prefer to use. Clip it on same way as before so that the seams are sort of on the inside. So that's what the zipper is going to look like. Get some light on that. That's what the zipper is going to look like. Next step now is to unzip your tail. Make sure that it's unzipped because if you leave this zipped up and then sew the rest of the tail, you're going to end up with a nightmare. <laughs> You're not going to be able to open up your tail to stuff it. Next step is to grab some nylon webbing. Make sure it's rated to pretty high. This one's a 250 kilo. Just because when you don't want this stuff breaking, use polypropylene. I think that's what it's called. Polyethylene? No. One of those ones. You'll find it. It's like seatbelt material. Find them in hardware stores. Some fabric stores have them. So you need pieces about that big. So say four inches. That might be a little bit too big. Go about that big. I've got really small hands, so it's probably not a good reference. But about that long. Grab two of them. So measure them up to each other like that, cut another one, yeah. Now this is where the fun part comes in. Grab a lighter. Kids, get your parents to do this if, if you're under the age of, I don't know. If you can't trust yourself with a lighter, don't do this. Or get your parents to do it for you. What you do is you get your lighter and just melt the edge. Just a little bit. What that does, it'll stop it from unraveling. And then melt that edge. And I think I already melted that edge. Yep. That's it. Those are now sealed. And ready for sewing. Place it on so that you've still got a bit of area for putting your seam. Oh well, for, yeah, for your seam allowance when you sew the tail all together. Grab a pin. This is probably the only part that we, you, you will still need pins even if you have clips. These need to be pinned on because you can't really clip them anywhere. Yeah, got that. Next one, the bottom. Fold the bottom up and under. Line it up. And then you pin it down. So 
I can find a straight non-bent pin. There we go. Pin that down. So what you want this distance in here to be is about the width of the belt that you are going to be using. If you make it too small, you can still sometimes squeeze the belt through. If you make it too big, your tail is going to sit a bit funky. You want it to be pretty much exactly the width of a normal belt. Now you want to double, triple check that they're about the same height. Which, in the height, there they are. They're about the same height. There we go. So the absolute crap. <laughs> Pull the pin out so you don't break your needle. And I think that's enough. So what did I do? Seven, eight times there? <laughs> now you've got your tail with your zipper and your belt loops. You'll want to fold it inside out. Keep the zipper down. Because if you sew it up and your zipper is up, you're not going to be able to open up your tail to turn it inside out. You're not going to be able to stuff it. And now we're going to pin all the way around the edge. Get all of them together as close as possible. With clips, I find that if you clip on one side and on the other, as close as you can, it just forces those colours to be as close as possible. Okay, so she's all been clipped together now, whole way along and around the tail. All of the fur around the edges has been tucked in to make sure that you don't get fur caught in the seams. Now all we need to do is sew from one end of the zipper, all the way around, to the other end of the zipper. So let's get that done. Make sure, big tip, make sure that your bobbin has enough, has enough thread. The same with your top thread. Make sure it's got enough thread because you don't want to be sewing with air for 20 minutes and then realise you have to repin it all. <laughs> Okay, now all the sewing is done and we're left with a tail. Almost done now. So what you want to do, see that hole where you've got your zipper? You want to try and feed the tail all the way through and inside out. Sometimes, sometimes I need to use my handy little bamboo poking stick. So I'll get this turned inside out probably going to be a bit of a wrestle, but I start from the end of the tail, put my bamboo poking stick into it, and push it on through. Now that it's poking out the other end, I can feed it all the way through and then pull the stick out the end and it is now inside out awesome so I've got a super low density polyfill here we want to try and keep it as low density as possible so that it still has that light movement what we want to do, if you can get your hand all the way down, that's great. If not, you might need a pokey stick to 
get it all the way down to the end of the tail. Try not to poke it too hard. And you can shake it in so that it gets down to the end. It's almost there. All right, now I need to do that a hundred more times. I'll come back to you with the fully stuffed tail and I'll show you a few techniques to loosen it up so that it's got a bit of flop to it. All right, now the tail is all stuffed. What we want to do is shove it in there, get the zipper, zip it up, grab this zipper and like force it inside itself. Awesome. Then you've got your two belt loops and attach your tail to yourself like that. The final step is to give it a brush, which we will do now. If you find that your stuffing is a bit clumped up and you can't really get it to sit nice, it's got, you know, some clumps in there, just absolutely abuse the tail. Like, slap it on the ground as many times as you want until it's sitting right. Thanks for watching Fuzzbutts. I plan to upload new content every fortnight, so please subscribe and ring that bell. And don't forget to absolutely obliterate that like button. Check out my website and Twitter in the description for all of my latest fursuit projects.